it. Right, question four. A bag contains five red discs and one black disc. Tina takes two discs from the bag at random without replacement. Diagram shows part of the tree diagram to illustrate the situation. Complete it in your answer book. <coughs> okay? So, well, I, up here the first disc was red. So we're left with four red and one black. So the next selection could be either red or black. And the problem with it being red is four out of the remaining five and one-fifth for it being black. So that was easy enough. But look what happened down here. Once the black disc has been taken out of the bag, there are still five discs left. But they're all red, aren't they? So there's only one option there. It must be red. And the probability of that happening is 1. So we have to actually write 1 at that point, not just leave that blank. Um, so there we go. Um, find the probability that exactly one of the two discs is red. Well, that seems to happen in two out of our three options. So we'd have to add those two probabilities together. So if it was red and then black, this is for part two, red then black was five sixths followed by one fifth, which is probability of one sixth, and then black then red, that was one sixth times one. So that was one sixth. And the probability of either of those two events happening is one sixth plus a sixth, which is a third, isn't it? Two sixths gives us exactly a third as our probability for that. Um, and all the discs, all right, how we're starting again now. So Tony, <coughs> Tina's friend has come along and all the discs are put back in the bag. He now takes three discs at random without replacement. Given that the first disc Tony takes is red, find the probability that the third disc Tony takes is also red. I think we need to go with a tree diagram, don't we? And when we do our tree diagram, actually this given that means that we're kind of coming into our tree diagram part way through the process. So, so the first disc, we don't actually have a choice about this at all. The first disc, we were told, was red. So now we can investigate the second disc. It's red or black. And we need to work out these probabilities. So there were six discs. The first one was red. So at the point that we took the second disc, we had four red and one black. So we were at that stage there. And now the third disc was taken. Here, it could still be red or black. <coughs> Three quarters in a row, one quarter black. Here, we don't have a choice anymore. The only black disc has been removed, so the third disc has to be red with probability 1. Again, certain that the third disc was red there. So that's what our new situation looked like. We don't care about what the probability was that the first disc was red. We've been given that that happened, so we're only thinking about what happens after that event. That's not an issue for us anymore. It's certain that that happened, because we've been told that. So we're asked for the probability that the last disc was red. Well, that would happen if we followed this branch, or if we followed this branch. This branch here is four-fifths times three-quarters, which is three-fifths. And this branch is one-fifth times one, which is one-fifth. So the probability that the, the third disc was red is three-fifths plus one-fifth, which is four-fifths. Of course, we could have said that the, the third disc being red is the opposite 
the complement of the third disc being black. So we could have done 1 minus 4 fifths times a quarter, which would have got us the same answer if we thought about it. Okay, the crucial thing is remembering that we don't associate a probability to this first one being red. It's given that that had happened, so we don't need to consider what the chance of that happening was. And there we are. Marks. That's maths.